Hey guys, welcome back to Review A Day. Now, it didn't occur to me yesterday when I was reviewing Manhunter, a couple of you pointed this out, the new issue of Manhunter, uh, the first one in probably over a year or two, Manhunter number 31, hits stands today. So go to the store, pick up the trades, pick up Manhunter 31, support a great uh, female-driven book that is well done, low sales, let's keep it going this time. Okay, uh, speaking of female characters, a couple of you commented, and I'm going to read the comments here. Uh, Surf Russia said, what do you think of female characters like Red Sonia uh, and Sheena Shana? Are they truly strong, independent women, or are they still male fantasy figures? Um, and then also, wait, I'm going to find this. Also, uh, Turpin was wondering, I was wondering if you have any good fantasy, as in Swords, Dragons, and Magic comics you could review. I'm a huge fantasy fan, and I find it disappointing that almost every fantasy comic is Conan, Red Sonia, or a clone of them? Uh, well, let's uh, talk about the first question first in terms of are they fantasy figures or are they actually strong women? I think, here's the deal. They started off as pulpy fantasy figures. Uh, that's how they're drawn. I mean, really, Red Sonia walks around in a chainmail bikini that barely covers her naughty bits. Of course it was there to provoke sales. Of course it was there to sell male readers on a hot female fantasy, and that's pretty much it. Now, modern writers don't feel comfortable with that. They don't want to do something that is just exploitation, and if they did, they would be called out on the market. So instead, they need to come up with something, an angle on it, to make strong female stories about these characters so that it's going to be acceptable to the female audience that reads comics as well. Um, does it work? No, probably not, because end of the day, there's still cheesecake. I know for myself, we've talked about this on the show before, that things like Bomb Queen or Red Sonia or really anything with a buxom, busty character in it, I feel very uncomfortable reading or picking up. Um, I almost feel like I'm picking up porn in the comic shop, and I would rather not. I'd rather pick up something that doesn't have a busty babe on the front so that I don't feel awkward and comfortable about reading it. That all being said, uh, Mike Homing is doing some good work on the Red Sonia series. Um, it is a good fantasy book, and it's creative. I wish there was a different character design. That being said, it caveats all over the place. With Witchblade, for example, when they, uh, you know, turned her instead of her T and A roots and put uh, put her in a jacket, put her clothes, and the Witchblade was just over here. That also feels disingenuous. So it's a double-edged sword. However. Uh, for Turpin and for the rest of you, I'm going to talk about a strong female character that does not prance around in basically no clothes and is a fantasy book today, which is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, Ted Neefy's Courtney Crumrin and the Night Things. There's actually a couple of different volumes of it, but this is the first one. It's a little... Well, it's, it's not really tough to describe this. It's basically a young girl uh, ends up moving to her uncle's house. Her uncle turns out to be a powerful wizard and she gets embroiled in a world of magic and fantasy. A lot of people compare it to Harry Potter. I would much more compare it to Roald Dahl stories or old fairy tales, because what Ted Navy does here is he doesn't really mince on the violence. He treats kids, it's kids literature. I'll get that out of the way, you know, I mean, it essentially is all ages. But just like in the Grimm's fairy tales, you have people being chopped up and made into stews, uh, but it's okay for kids to hear. It's the same thing with Courtney Crumrin, that terrible things happen to people, and they just move on, and they deal with it, and they deal with life. Courtney Crumrin is a great character. She is a grumpy kid who has a good heart, but end of the day realizes that bad things happen, and the world is not as good as everybody thinks. Uh, very great, very creative, very original series. A couple of the other books, there's... Uh, Courtney Crumrin and the Coven of the Mystics, which is also good. Courtney Crumrin and the Twilight Kingdom, also excellent. All three books uh, work really, really well together. Each one collects a four-issue miniseries. Um, they recently released this book, which is Courtney Crumrin and the Fire Thief's Tale, which follows up on events from the last volume. This is very much just a standalone tale that follows up on the others. Um, it's not quite as rich as the previous three volumes, but I also don't think it's meant to be. In any case, pick up the first volume of Courtney Crumrin. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Tell me if you like it. In particular, Turpin, uh, tell me if this satisfies your fantasy Jones. But yeah, great book. Pick it up. We will be back tomorrow. Hope you guys are enjoying New Comic Book Day.